And good afternoon, well at least it's good afternoon here in the UK. Uh, welcome to Mel Science. Absolute pleasure to have you here today, uh, wherever you are in the world. Um, and on that note, please do, as you sign in, uh, let me know uh, where you come from and who you are, uh, because um, with this particular screen, let me just adjust the screen there a little bit, um, because with this particular uh, live webinar, and it's indeed live, um, I can't hear you and I can't see you, but I can see what you write. And sometimes um, the camera goes a little bit out of focus and hopefully it's back into focus now, I think, hopefully. Um, so do let me know uh, who you are, where you come from, so I can make it a little bit more of a personalised starting journey with Mel Science for you today. I can't see anybody just yet. Nobody just yet. Please send me ah, a message. Hi, I'm from Florida. My name is Gavin. Gavin, delighted to have you on board. Thank you very much. I hope you're not going to be on your own today. Um, so we've got a Gavin in. Uh, New York, my name is Ava. Hello, Ava. How are you doing? Fantastic uh, to have you on board. And thank you for joining Mel. Hi, I'm Alex. I've got Alex, got Ava, I've got Gavin. So I've got three, three, three budding scientists. Ah, from Aaron. Hello from Aaron from London. Oh, you're just down south. Uh, fantastic. And Uta, Kaya and Micah. Hello, Kaya and Micah. Hello, our name is uh, Matilda and Kitty. I'm from Matilda and Kitty, and you're from the UK too. Fantastic. Um, and we're from the uh, Isabel and Cora. Hello, Isabel and Cora. Lovely, jubbly. Fantastic, and Alex. Lovely. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, my name's Dan, and this is Mel Science. And thank you very much for subscribing and uh, taking part in what I hope will be a wonderful journey in chemistry and science, of course, well, physics as well. Um, hi, Dan. Hello, Victoria. And Sebastian. Hello, Sebastian. I'm Alex. I'm Alex and Bear. Alex and Bear. Got the bear? Uh, <laughs> I also have a little bear, which I can show you a little bit later. So, uh, this is, again, Mel Science. Um, my name's Dan. Just a quick recap. I don't, I can't um, hear you and I can't see you, but I can see what you type and therefore I can ask, uh, answer any questions you have. So please feel free to ask me those questions as we go through this set today. So because you're doing TIN, this will be the first of your Mel experiments um, that you will have done. So um, a quick intro to the bits of kit that you actually need uh, today um, and some of the kit that comes with it that you don't need today, but you could use a little bit later. So you will need um, today your phone. Um, of some kind, any phone will do. Um, so you need a phone and you need your tin. So we're doing this tin set today. So this is tin and this is the kit we're going to be working through today. So we're going to do both of these experiments and I'm going to show you how to do it and all the health and safety and explain uh, a lot of the science and also show you a little bit of context as well. So you will also need um, your um, chemistry set, so the starter kit that comes with your uh, tin set, uh, with mail set, and you'll need the tray that comes out of, the, out of that kit and the little um, magnifying lens that clips onto your phone. So a little magnifying lens comes off it, and of course you need your safety specs. Um, BC, hello BC uh, from Canada. Okay, cool. Right, so without much further ado, let's have a little look around, and I'll go through fairly slowly um, through the tin um, experimental set and the equipment that we actually need. Now I'm going to swap cameras for that so we can see. And again, please feel free to ask me any questions you have as we go through. So no particular order, but we do need some safety specs. So your safety specs from your general kit, your starter kit. You also need your gloves um, from the um, Mel chemistry box set itself. So from the little box set itself, upside down. So from the tin box itself, you will need um, the Petri dish, so one Petri dish, okay? You need the little pin. Now this little safety pin here is what we use to um, depress the little safety plugs out of the uh, chemical containers, the reagent containers, okay? So you need that, you need the red top, so one red top. You need the little tiny test tube with the uh, top in the top, so it's a little, a little tiny sort of reaction vessel, a little test tube with a plastic top. You also need four, so you need four AAA batteries. So four AAA, or technically of course they're cells. So you need four AAA cells. You need the little tiny battery pack, Okay, that comes in your kit, and you need you, the leads, the little crocodile leads. As I said before, you need the tray, the white tray that comes in your starter box. Um, and you also need then the following chemicals. Okay, so we're going to do two separate experiments. Which two experiments are we doing? Alex, we're going to do the tin hedgehog first, and then we're going to do the tin dendrite. So we're going to do both of them uh, today. Is that okay, Alex? Um, cool. So first of all, we also need the zinc. So you need little zinc pellets in your box. So the zinc pellets. We also need the uh, liquid soap, so a little bit of liquid soap. Uh, just close that, hold on. Um, so we need a little, little bit of liquid soap. And then the first of our real chemicals here, we've got sodium hydrogen sulfate. So sodium hydrogen sulfate. 
Um, and then you need two of those bottles, so two bottles of the sodium hydrogen sulfate. Um, and then you need the tin chloride. You can't do a tin experiment unless you've got some tin chloride. So here's where our tin is lurking. It's in our tin uh, chloride, okay? And these are the two little experiment cards. So I'm just going to use these to show you which ones. Um, which I did the tin dendrite already. No problem. Don't panic, Alex. Don't panic. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to throw in a lot of science today. And I'm going to explain things. You can ask some questions as well. So don't panic about that at all. And then we'll do the hedgehog. Uh, we'll do the hedgehog first. So don't panic about that one. Okay. Um, right. I think we covered everything. Is everybody okay? Does that make sense? Is everybody up and ready? All gone very quiet out there. It is quite surreal having this because I'm on my own in this sort of lab uh, and all I've got for communications and that sense of humanity is the occasional comment that you commit to a, a type in motive. Yes, thank you, Emma. Excellent. Emma, you're a star. At least I know where we're going. Right, right. So without further ado, put this to one side. Oh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start with just a quick, ready, Sebastian, yes, ready, excellent, cool. Uh, you guys, absolutely wonderful. Right, so I'm going to... Just going to quickly introduce tin, and then we're going to start with the uh, the experiment. So just a quick start, and I might even throw the occasional joke in uh, for you as well. So slideshow here. So without further ado, and um, you might think, ah, what's a cat got to do with tin? Well, interestingly, in the blue plastic gloves. Yes, Ava, you can stick your gloves on now if you'd like. No problem at all. Um, well, a cat's whiskers have something very curious to do with tin. So remember that. So remember the cat and. His And also today we're going to make a little tin hedgehog, so that's what a little hedgehog looks like. So just to remind you, little spiky uh, little hedgehogs. Um, and also, interestingly, we have the Oscars, of course. One one recently, of course. You might have recognised me on stage. Um, but what is the connection? Does anybody know what the connection between tin and the Oscars might be? Hey? Anybody know what the connection might be? Anybody out there? Anybody out there? Oscar is gold. No, Alex. Ha! Fooled you. The actual Oscar's actually coated in gold, it's actually coated in gold, but it's actually made of bronze. And bronze is large, part of bronze is tin, okay? So that's where um, the connection between the Oscars is. So this is the element, so behind me on the board, of course, I've got my periodic table. Um, and the element tin here, of course, is element 50, as it says, I'm littling, so that's the element 50. Um, and it has the symbol SN, and that stands for stannum, okay? So that stands for stannum. And and I'll go through a little bit about the history of it and where it comes from and stuff like that shortly. But let's get cracking into the experiment, shall we? Okay, cool. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with the tin hedgehog first. We're going to do tin hedgehog first. We'll put all that stuff to one side. So what do we need for that? We need... I'll just move all that out of the way. So first of all, you need your little... Um, patch, uh, your little um, test tube uh, with a lid on it. Um, you also need the zinc, okay, so you get your zinc. We don't need that, and we don't need our cells. So we can put all that to one side. And I'll move that to one side, and I'll move that box. Okay, um, and I'll move that, and that, and that. So here we are, hopefully everybody can see that. Um, you also need then the um, sodium hydrogen sulfate, so sodium hydrogen sulfate. You also need your tin chloride, so a little bit of tin chloride, so you've got to do an experiment with tin, with tin. And your little tiny um, uh, safety seal pricker, it's like a little sort of paper clip, obviously. And you also need one of the little stoppers that come into the bottle stoppers. Okay. Right. So what do we do? First of all, let's get our gloves on. Okay. Hopefully. So get your little gloves on and also get your glasses on. If there are any spills anywhere down the line, if any spills at all, um, just get a bit of paper towel and wipe, wipe it up with the paper towel, um, and then get a, a wet, wet towel, wipe it, and then dry wipe it again. Okay, so wet, dry, wet. So dry, wet, dry. Okay, so this is gloves on. And that's one. Pour in that glove, and get to pour two in the glove. Right, there we are. And now for some glasses. So whack on our little safety glasses. So first things first, what we need to do is depress the little safety seal in each of the containers. Now with this one, this, we've only got one here of sodium hydrogen sulfate. So if you take the lid off this one, and you can see that there's a little tiny plug, look, in the top, which is uh, to stop the liquid sort of escaping out, okay? So you take your little tiny paper clip 
and push the plug into the uh, sodium hydrogen sulfate. Okay, so that's that done. And um, the next thing is you get the tin uh, chloride, so the tin chloride, and just give it a little tap because sometimes a little bit of powder gets stuck in the, the neck of the bottle here as it's th through transport. So just give it a little tap to make sure all the powder is down there. So take the lid off that one. So that's our tin chloride. Now, the next thing we need to do is take some zinc. So we need one, just one little zinc pellet. So one little zinc pellet, okay? And then put that one pellet into the base of our test tube. So we we'll take the lid off that one. Okay, so that's one of my little, so that's what they look like. So you just want one little tiny zinc pellet. And of course that is um, the element zinc and that's a transition metal. And of course you find that here, that's element uh, number 30. So that actual little pellet is pure zinc, okay? And that's the element number 30. So we're actually dealing with element 30 and element 50. Cool. Right, so next thing we need to do is we need to empty the entire contents of the sodium hydrogen sulfate. So all of that bottle into the tin chloride. So the whole of this bottle into the tin chloride. So squirt, squirt, squirt all of that into the tin chloride, which you notice is a powder. Can you pause? Ava, yes, of course. Ava, where would you like me to? Ava, what would you like? Is it everybody okay? Ava, what would you like me to repeat? Of course, the difficulty is I can't see you. So if I was not as normally, I'd be teaching in a class and I would see you, I can actually help. So uh, is everybody okay so far? So what I would put is the sodium hydrogen sulfate into the tin chloride bottle. What do we pour first? You pour the sodium hydrogen sulfate, Ava, sodium hydrogen sulfate, all good. Alex, lovely, excellent, thanks Alex. Pour all of this bottle into the sodium chloride bottle, okay? So Ava, you just press out the plug at the top of the bottle, as I said, and then just squirt the whole bottle, so squirt look, the whole bottle into the tin chloride bottle. Is the Oscar made of, made tin chloride, has a seal on it? In, is the Oscar made? Yes, the, the, tin chloride, the tin chloride has no seal on it. It shouldn't have any seal on it. Um, now what you need to do is... Um, <laughs> oh, I see the question. No, the Oscar itself is made of bronze inside, and, and bronze, which I'm going to explain in a bit, is an alloy of tin and copper. So now what you need to do is put the little tiny stopper into the tin chloride bottle like that. So put the little stopper in like that and push it down. You might need a bit of a firm uh, push to get that down onto the bottle. And then put your red cap onto the tin chloride bottle like that. So then put your red cap onto the tin chloride bottle, okay? Everybody okay with that? Now what we need to do is dissolve the tin chloride in the sodium hydrogen sulfate. For us, it does have a seal, we can get it off. We can't get it off. Um, Gavin, you can't get the seal off. Sometimes it's a bit stiff. You have to give it a really good poke, okay? Yes, Ava, sure, 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 Ava, no problem at all. No problem at all. I'm just going to keep shaking this for a bit, so while you guys are doing it. Gavin, is that okay? Yeah, so Gavin, just give it a, a push. Sometimes you have to really give it a little workout. And the reason is, obviously, that these um, chemistry packs come through the post, and to, to absolutely remove any chance that there's going to be any spills, they put a little tiny seal in the, t in the neck of the bottles, and that stops the liquid coming out. So we give that a really good shake and keep shaking that and dissolve all that tin chloride in the sodium hydrogen sulfate. Okay. So, okay. Cool. Is everybody okay so far? Everybody okay so far? Lots of little busy chemists out there, I hope. Yes, 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 Matilda. Yes, lovely. Excellent. Thank you so much. Kathleen says yes. Maddox says yes. Aaron says yes. Superb. Top banana. Excellent. Right. Now, so once you've done that, what you then do is we're going to half fill, so half fill the container, so the little test tube with your zinc pellet in it. So half fill that with the liquid in your tin chloride. So half fill that with the liquid in the tin chloride. So put, so squirt that in there like that. So half fill. Like so. So half fill that. Put your little lid back on there. all that to one side and then we need to put the lid back on our little pellet of zinc so squish that onto there like that now what you want to do that reaction will happen almost immediately will happen at all image don't be very careful with this very gentle with this little container and just leave it to one side so we need to leave this reaction going so we need to leave it cooking 
um, for about 10 minutes. And then eventually, hopefully, we shall have a little hedgehog which we can look at. Um, I'm going to come back to that, so I will come back to that. Now, in your kit, to show you, in your kit, you also have your uh, magnifier. So this little magnifying lens um, clips onto your phone like this look. If I just show you, so this is your phone. What you do is you get your magnifier, and don't forget you might have to take the lens cap off the magnifier itself. Um, take your phone and put it over there like that. Okay, and we can use this to zoom in. If I just access my camera, we can use this to zoom in. If you see, look, on, like, say, for example, my hand, I can zoom in on my hand. Um, I don't know if you can see that magnifying uh, on my hand. So that's a little uh, magnifier. Now that's going to be what pellet? Um, Ava, the little pellet of zinc. Um, Ava, if that's all right. So a little, little pellet of zinc. Uh, and that is this stuff here. So Ava, that's what you want, the little pellet of zinc, okay? Is that all right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just show you a little while that one's cooking and before we get on to the, um, the next experiment, let's just take this off for a second is tin itself, tin, stannum, um, is, this is the ore actually, I've got a little tiny piece of the ore, look, that's a little tiny piece of the ore, that's the rock that tin, the element here, the element uh, tin um, comes from, so if we look at um, element 50, which is the tin, it actually comes from this ore, which is called cassiterite, um, and cassiterite itself is tin oxide. So if you look at element 8 here, of course, uh, when you combine uh, tin with oxygen, it forms SNO. So that's the element, the compound SNO. And in Cornwall, you get down south in England in Cornwall, you have these big old mines because they used to mine um, tin for thousands of years, okay? Uh, if we just crack on a little bit. That other mine on the other side, actually, is a mine in, in Malaysia where they're using high-powered hoses to wash the tin oxide out of the uh, ground. Now, let's look at the chemistry, a little bit of chemistry. So here we have all these metals. So these are the metals on the periodic table, and these are the non-metals on the periodic table, okay? But all the metals have different levels of reactivity. They have different levels of reactivity. So if I asked you what kind of metals do typically, what kind of metal do we typically use to make jewellery? Anybody know? What kind of metals do we typically use to make jewellery? He said in the spooky silence of this room, and no one was typing anything. Anybody? Ah, silver, yes, thank you. Dennis, smart kids, yes. Silver, iron, smart. <laughs> you don't make jewelry out of iron, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, it's silver and gold. And also, you see, if you look down here, look, we've got gold, um, and we have silver. You've got platinum, you've got iridium, you've got osmium and so on and so forth. You've got really expensive rings with osmium, of course. Um, but these are the metals. Now, these metals are not very reactive. Diamond, silver, gold. Yes. Gavin, yes. But diamonds aren't metal. Diamonds are made of carbon, so that's a non-metal. So it's a non-metal. Diamonds are pure carbon, so it's non-metal. So all of these metals, okay, all these metals, this key learning point, all of the metals have different layers of reactivity, different amounts of reactivity. Some are really reactive. So here, for example, we've got rubidium and cesium, and they are most reactive metals in the periodic table. Uh, and this whole column here, the alkaline metals are very reactive, they're really reactive. And then you've got really, really, really inactive metals or unreactive metals like gold and silver and platinum and so on and so forth. So what does that mean? It means that if you put a more reactive metal in a solution of a less reactive metal, so we have tin chloride solution, it will knock the metal out, it will displace it. Okay, so we hierarchy on this, on that, re on that reactivity series, you see these metals here, any metal up here, look, on the reactivity series, will displace any metal beneath it, okay? That's what displace, that's, what, that's what's happening in our little thing in a second. I'm gonna come back to that in a moment, okay. I just scooze along. So why is tin important? Well, tin's important because it gave rise to the Bronze Age. Because when they found out thousands of years ago um, that if you combine tin with copper, and of course copper in our periodic table is element 29, if you combine tin with copper, you get bronze. And that means that your weapons are really super, super powerful compared to just the pure copper ones. Um, and iron, of course, came much later than the Iron Age. Um, now, if you've got an army um, that are carrying these kind of spears and also these kind of shields, which are bronze, you are invincible. So actually, this element, tin, changed the world. 
because as soon as the Bronze Age army started, they changed the whole nature, all started, of course, in Europe, and, and then went around the world. But the Bronze Age is really important. That's all down to tin. Okay. So we'll come on to that one a little bit later. Let's crack on with the, the next one. Okay, next experiment. So that's tin chloride. I'm going to come back to it. If you have a little look, just have a little look and just see. Be very gentle with it. Don't knock it about. Don't shake it. But you should by now see some wonderful little tiny spines. Some little tiny prickly spines. And again, if you use your magnifier on your phone, you should be able to see some beautiful little tiny prickly spines on your hedgehog. Can't quite see it there. My solution is a little bit cloudy, but you can see some little prickly spines on that pellet at the moment. Okay. Cool. Would anybody like a joke? Anybody like a joke? Are we game for a small bit of titillation? All gone very quiet out there. Yes, 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 yes. Cool. Dennis, yes, excellent, excellent. Okay, knock, knock. Knock, knock joke. So, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's that? Europe. 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 <laughs> Europe who? No, I'm not. <laughs> Europe. Europe who? No, I don't think so. You're very nasty. You're a very unpleasant bunch. <laughs> Get it? Europe who? <laughs> I think it's one of my favorite knock-knock dogs. Cool. Anyway, so on that... <laughs> So on that note, on that note, um, right, let's move on a, a little bit. Um, we're going to try now look at the um, tin dendrite. So we're looking at tin dendrite. So once again, uh, we need our little tray. So our safety tray. Um, we also need then, back in the room, the chemicals, the major chemicals. Glad you liked it, Kaya. Glad you liked it, Gavin. Sebastian, Kaya, lovely. <laughs> so we need our sodium hydrogen sulfate again. We need our tin chloride. You also now need some soap, so a little bit of a soap solution, like a couple of drops of uh, soap. We also need the um, Petri dish. Now, what I'm going to do when I do this experiment is I'm going to lift it up on a little platform so you can see it closer to the uh, camera lens here, okay? Um, we also need um, four of your little AA batteries. So four little AA uh, cells. You need to untie then the crocodile clips. So untie these little crocodile clips like that, okay, so I have a little knot in it, like, oh, se voila, okay, now you also need your, um, so battery pack, and again, once again, so we're going to do the 10 dendrite uh, experiment. What happens when you mix uh, sodium hydrogen sulfate with uh, Dennis? Um, what's actually happening? The reason we use sodium hydrogen sulfate, Dennis, a lovely question, is um, if you were just to use water, you notice that the uh, tin chloride is in a powder form. So the tin chloride look is in a powder form, it's solid. Um, if we use, just use water, the water binds quite nicely to the tin and um, it stops the tin reacting in a way, it doesn't stop it reacting completely, it's basically what chemists call hydrolyzes it, so it binds it a little bit. Um, can I just take a step back a little bit? Look at all these elements, okay, because you know that everybody, has everybody heard of atoms? Has everybody heard of atoms? Anybody heard of atoms? Yep, fantastic, great. So everything, all of these elements here are basically made of atoms, and atoms themselves have electrons whizzing around the outside, and if you, and quarks, excellent. Well, we're not going to go that deeply into the nucleus, Alex. <laughs> but I'm very impressed. Up and down quarks in different colours as well, okay? Fantastic. But an atom itself has got the right amount of electrons on it as the positive protons. And therefore, an atom has no charge, okay? So an atom has no charge. But in a solution, because you see the solution here, this is sodium hydrogen sulfate. The sodium um, and the sulfate ions, for example, they have an electron missing or an extra electron, so they become ions. So you've got loads of little ions whizzing around in the solution, okay? So when we add sodium hydrogen sulfate, which is a slightly acidic solution, to the tin chloride, it actually allows the tin chloride, the tin ions, so these little ions here look of tin, they're not atoms of tin, they're ions of tin, um, they allowed those little ions of tin to whiz around. They go, yeah, I want to react. I want to. I need electrons. I need electrons because I need two electrons to become a metal. 
Because remember, when we looked at the zinc, can you see the zinc was actually zinc metal? Okay. How about molecules? A molecule, so if you have two atoms, two or more atoms together, you have a molecule. So for example, oxygen, look, oxygen, elemental oxygen, it doesn't exist as an atom. It has to have two oxygens together, O2, everybody's seen O2, O2, that's a molecule of oxygen. So O2 is a molecule, and then you get H2O if you, if you react. Um, oxygen, of course, with hydrogen, you get H2O, and that makes a molecule, that's a molecule, okay? Um, so if we look at, again, our, this is a metal, Atoms, so these are atoms of zinc. Everybody see that? So that's a metallic atoms of zinc. But you couldn't see, now let me show you. This is, look, this is a piece of tin. This is actual tin. This is metallic tin. Um, and you can make interesting things with it, like this, for example. This is um, an organ pipe. I don't know if anybody can see that. Now, this is an organ pipe, and this is made of pure elemental tin. So if you bash out this tin from the tin mine, um, you can make this organ pipe. Lock and play it, look. A music show as well as a tin metal show uh, on that note. And of course, this is a little tin pipe. So these are little tin pipe. <laughs> I'm not very good at playing that one. I prefer my monotone, to be fair. OK, cool. So what's actually happening then, in our, and to answer that question, is in both the solutions, you're making the tin ions, the charged ions, whiz around. And they are looking for electrons to become tin metal. So the tin is trying to become, the tin ions are trying to become tin metal. They need two little electrons for that. Okay, so let's try that um, with our tin dendrite. So I'll move that out of the way a little bit. Um, so first things first, if we load up our um, battery pack. So remember the springs, you little look at the little springs inside your battery pack. The flat end, okay, which is the negative end, goes into there. So click that up and load up your battery pack, like so. So pop that in there like that, and pop that in there like so. Cool. Now the next thing again we need to do is depress the little plug, the little safety seal in our uh, sodium hydrogen sulfate. So take the top off of that one, and then depress the little safety seal. And again, sometimes they're quite stubborn, so you want to give it a real poke um, to get the little plug out, okay? Um, right, question. Uh, why, when sometimes when humans touch metal, they get an electric shock? Oh, that's a lovely question. And electricity, of course, which is the flow of electrons, okay? If you touch something, human beings conduct electricity. So the electricity itself will flow through you down through to Earth, okay? And as it does that, it really super, that, that shock sensation, because there's basically electricity that makes the human beings work. So all the, every time you think of something, all your little nerve endings, there's basically little electrons running through all the little nerves. And if you give them a super power, you know, extra pile of electrons effectively with loads more energy, like in the, in the wall, um, you know, you get an electric shock because those are so, they super excite um, the electrons in your body effectively, or the atoms in your body, okay. Um, is the sort of simplish in the nutshell sort of answer. Okay, right, so the next thing we need to get up is our tin uh, chloride. Um, and then open up a little bit of the soap. Now we're going to have to take the little safety plug, of course, out of the soap again. Um, right, so push that little safety plug out of the soap. Mine was very easy that time, actually, it was very easy. Cool. Now we're almost good to go. Now, as I said before, I'm going to raise uh, my um, experimental apparatus so it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. So I'm just going to use a little tripod for this purpose and hopefully get everything raised up here for you to see better. I think hopefully. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to turn some lights down a little bit. So just turn a little light down just to make it a little bit easier. So we're back in like three seconds. Maybe four seconds. Um, uh, do you know what that your brain can power up a tiny bulb because of all the electrons in your brain? Alex, yes, I do. It's not just necessarily the electrons. It's the amount of energy, of course, um, that your body has as a consequence of all metabolic, metabolic processes. OK, cool. Um, and if you want a really good film, a really cool film, of course, is um, The Matrix, which uh, um, basically uses human beings as a big battery uh, for that world. OK. Oh, right. <laughs> So first things first, um, what we need to do then, like we did the last time, 
um, is add the sodium hydrogen sulfate, sorry, it's a little bit out of focus, that sodium hydrogen sulfate to my tin chloride, okay? So sodium hydrogen sulfate, so put the, the um, sodium hydrogen sulfate into the whole bottle, squirt it in to the tin chloride like that. So the whole bottle goes in, whole bottle goes in once again. You now then take the uh, little plug, the little tiny plug, and push that hard into the bottle. So push the little tiny plug, if I show you that there, look. So push that little tiny plug top into the uh, bottle. And then get our red cap again. So get your little red cap. So that's a little red cap. Um, and screw that down there like that. And then, of course, we need to give that a good sh shake. So give that a good shake. Once you've got a little red cap and the plug firmly on it, then give it a really good shake to dissolve all of the tin chloride. Um, I don't know what to what use neon for. Um, neon, it's a lovely question. It's no problem, Alex. This is a sign show. You sign up to Mel to have some lines, uh, live lessons with a science teacher. And I'm very happy to answer all your questions here. Um, so neon, look, as part of the... Um, Nobel gas groups go to zero or group eight, depending what kind of style of chemistry you are. Um, and so neon here is part of um, the so-called Nobel gases. They have here, and they were discovered very, very late on in the 19th century, in the 1880s, 1890s, by Ramsey. Um, and they have all electrons in the outer orbital, eight electrons in the outer orbital, so they don't want to react with anything. Now, they are inert. So that's the word for that is inert, okay? So we use neon uh, most popularly in things called neon lights. Wherever you see sort of um, flashing lights and stuff like that, they're different coloured lights um, in, outside shops and stuff like that. Those tubes are full of neon gas, a lot of them full of neon gas. Okay, cool. So keep giving that a good shake uh, until it's all dissolved. Is everybody okay? Is everybody okay? Am I going too fast? Ava, are you okay, Ava? Nice. Is everybody else okay? Thanks, Alex. We are good. Matilda's good. Ava's good. Excellent. Superb. Good, 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 cool, cool, cool. Excellent. Nice one. Lovely to have you on board once again. Thank you so much. Dennis is lovely. Superb. I'm so sorry I can't see you. It's very unusual for a teacher like me not to be able to see your students and see them getting on and enjoying the science and stuff like that. So I can't share that with you. So, but it's lovely to have just the word is good. Okay, cool. Right. Now what we need to do is squirt the whole of our bottle. So we're going to put the whole of this bottle into our Petri dish. So squirt the whole lot, look, into your Petri dish. So once you've got it all nice and dissolved, squirt the whole lot into your Petri dish. Okay. So that's the whole lot into the Petri dish. Right. Now you'll notice, you'll notice, look, because of surface tension, that the liquid itself sort of, you know, sticks to itself because it's got that sort of van der Waals forces in it and it sticks to itself. So that's where the drop or two, do you want to put one or two drops of the liquid soap onto the surface to break up the surface tension and allow the liquid to um, cover the whole of the base of the Petri dish. So if you just give that a little tiny swizzle and there we have the liquid is now completely covered. Right, almost there, almost there, cool. What we need to do now is connect up the battery pack, okay? So we're basically using a very simple electrolytic cell. So you put the black, make sure when you connect it, make sure when you connect it, if I just show you that look, that the black lead is on the black, of the metal, the exposed metal and not the plastic, okay? So the crock click goes on the exposed metal of our lead like so. I'm gonna put that down like that. And then put the red one on the red lead. So then put the red one, obviously, on the red lead. Now this is very important, this bit. When you get your Petri dish, you must make sure that the little mouth, the little mouth of the crocodile clip is right down, is actually in the liquid in the Petri dish, okay? So make sure that the mouth of both of the crocodile clips is in the Petri dish, in the liquid in the Petri dish, okay? So we're just gonna move that like that, connect that up. And then I'm just going to move that to one side. And then make sure, you might have to push the covering back a little bit. So I push that to one side and then make sure the mouth of the crocodile clip is, I'm just going to move that around to make it better, clearer for you, um, is in the liquid itself. And then the same thing with the black side, but put the black one on the opposite side, making sure that the liquid 
is in contact directly with it. Okay, now that doesn't happen immediately, so you've got to give it a couple of seconds to work, or a minute or two to work, and then hopefully you should see, start to see some really beautiful little tiny tin dendrites creeping across. So if you've got that um, set up, and you can see immediately on mine, it's just started to create some little, so be very careful with this guys and girls. Um, don't shake it, don't move it at all. These little dendrites are very, very fine and very friable, okay? Very friable indeed. So just leave that cooking for a second and we'll, I'll show you a bit more science, okay? So a little bit more explanation and a background to uh, tin. So go back to our tin. Now interestingly, tin has what are called different allotropes, okay? Different forms of tin. Sulfur has different allotropes, and tin also has different forms of tin. It appears in different ways. And interestingly, if the temperature goes down below 13, it goes from beta tin to alpha tin, or from alpha tin, rather, to beta tin, and it changes form. Remember I showed you this beautiful look, little piece of silver metal, this very silvery, wonderful piece of pure tin. If the temperature plummets to 13, but down to sort of minus 13, it really changes form. And interestingly, when they had organ pipes in the Middle Ages, they had these sort of mini ice age. They had a mini ice age where the temperature stayed down from about minus 20 for quite some time over the winter months. And all their little organ pipes where they had tin in the um, organ pipes fell apart um, because the, the tin changed form. So you can't, it's very difficult to find um, organs. Let me just show you what I mean. Um, so this is it here, look. So you've got the alpha tin here, it's that horrible, it's like sort of Jekyll and Hyde. Um, and you've got the sort of beta tin, which is this lovely, shiny, wonderful metallic tin. But if the temperature gets too cold, so at minus 13 degrees, it turns into horrible alpha tin, okay. Um, so when the embroid turns to the early feet, what is the line between the chest and the head? Uh, it's called the umbilical cord. It's called the umbilical cord. And it's not from the chest to the head. It's from the belly button to the mother's placenta, okay? It's called the umbilical cord. Totally off topic, but it's okay. You can ask questions away. <laughs> okay, so I've got a little tiny tin pipe here. This is another little uh, organ pipe. And really, one of the, the reasons that they made tin, one of the properties of tin into making instruments is it has a beautiful ring, it has a wonderful sonorous quality. That's why you don't make, for example, instruments out of iron, um, for example, um, and, and various other, well, the rest of the metals particularly, but tin makes instruments sound in a really beautiful uh, way. It gives them a nice singing voice, very quality. Um, and of course, that's what an organ looks like, and that's where all these little um, pipes come from. And of course, they're all largely made of tin, or um, a, a tin lead alloy, uh, which of course is pewter. Okay, so hopefully cooking a little bit. So what is a dendrite? What is that word dendrite? So we've made a little tin dendrite. We're looking at it, or it should be forming in a minute. But a dendrite is basically a structure with those little strands off it branching out of it. And a, t a tree, when you look at a nice big tree, that has a dendritic pattern. And actually this picture here shows um, manganese oxide. So manganese, manganese is the um, element here, uh, 25. That's manganese, not magnesium. Okay, so magnesium here is element 12. Um, but manganese, um, here element 25, um, in the rock it actually has a dendritic form. It actually naturally forms a, a dendrite. And of course all your nerves, well not all the nerves, but most of the nerves are connected by little tiny fluffy dendritic uh, tentacles. So that when that, that impulse goes down your arm and it gets to the end of the arm and then of course you have... Um, so some of the nerves are directly connected, but a huge number have what's called a synaptic gap. And the um, impulse comes down here, releases some chemicals, some neurotransmitters, and that then stimulates another chemical reaction here, which releases an electronic charge, which passes up the other end of the nerve. Okay, cool. Uh, and we'll come back to the whiskers in a second. Um, cool. How are we doing? How's everybody's doing? How's everybody's uh, tin dendrite doing? That's what mine looks like at the moment. Has everybody got a tin dendrite going? Wonderful. Kaya, Matilda, really good. Excellent, Matilda. Lovely. It's always good to have uh, some success stories here in chemistry. Ha! Ah, H to panelists. No, what's gone wrong? Who's H? H. How can I help, H? How can I help? All good. Ava's good. Excellent. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, is it, is it time for another quick joke? H, it's not working. Um, H, um, one of the key, two key reasons that it might not work, or three key reasons, if you connect the, make sure that the um, crocodile clip is connected. Thanks, Isabel, fantastic. Um, but H, 
Um, the crocodile clip needs to be the metal part of the metal crocodile clip needs to be connected to the exposed metal wire. So not the black wire, so not the black covering. It connects to the other way. If connected to the other wire, what happens to the hit? Oh, it's a swap. If you can do this, it's one of the experiments you can connect. If you swap it round, you will see that the tin dendrite grows from a different point. So what's actually happening in your solution? Because you know that a battery itself is a source of electrical power. And what you've got here is a tin chloride solution. So you've got a solution that will con which will conduct electricity. So remember, I said that the tin ions are swimming around looking for electrons. As soon as they hit the black terminal, as soon as they hit the negative terminal, there are loads of electrons at, that, at this negative terminal, okay? And the tin ion comes, oh my gosh, I can get some electrons. So it grabs the two electrons that it needs and it becomes tin metal, okay? So it becomes uh, tin metal. Um, and so you can actually see that. You can actually see the tin metal actually forming. So you see the tin metal actually forming. Um, and so that's what's happening in this reaction here, is that tin ions are swimming through the solution. They're hitting the electrode, the negative electrode here. They're collecting the two electrons they've got, and they're forming tin metal, which, of course, is different to our tin hedgehog. And if we come back to our tin hedgehog briefly, Hopefully you should have got some really beautiful little spines on your tin hedgehog, I hope. I don't know if it can, the camera can zoom in on that one a little bit, maybe. We shish it and growing now from the red one. Yes, Matilda, fantastic. It looks like a fern plant. Yes, it does, Gavin. Yeah, fern has little dendrites as well, a dendritic pattern. Um, and if you look at, again at your little tin hedgehog, hopefully you can see that. So what actually happened here? Yay, it's working. Yeah, you've got to be patient. And actually the other reason why it often doesn't work is the, uh, the battery itself might be a bit flat. The whole battery pack, if one of the cells is a bit negative, it doesn't work. So just give it time, just give it time. So back to the hedgehog. So with our little hedgehog, uh, what's happening is the tin, remember I told you that zinc is more reactive than tin. So zinc is above tin in the, in the reactivity series. So when you put the um, solution in, th these, these tin ions hit the zinc and the zinc goes, Hello, hello, hello. I think I, <laughs> I'm more reactive than you. Bang! And so the tin goes, ah! Um, and it collects electrons from the zinc. It collects electrons from the zinc, and the zinc goes into solution. So the zinc becomes zinc ions, and the tin becomes tin metal. So you can see those little tiny spikes, those little spikes are tin metal. So in exactly the same way, it's taken electrons Okay, because you couldn't see the tin in the solution. It's taken the electrons from the zinc, and the zinc's gone, bye, see you later, and the zinc has gone into solution. So if you, carefully, don't shake that little tube about, but if you leave that little tube, it will become completely colourless. If it's slightly white, cloudy sometimes because of the temperature, um, if you leave that tube on your thing for about a week to two weeks, it will actually last for months, um, you will see that the zinc almost completely disappears, a little pellet disappears as it goes into solution and all the tin comes back out, okay? And Mackenzie asks, how long is the hedgehog like? Um, if you leave the top on, sometimes it does actually build up a little bit of gas builds up in the uh, test tube. So you might find in about an hour or two hours, the top goes boop and it pops off, okay? Don't worry about that, just stick the top back on carefully. Don't, don't shake the tin about. But Mackenzie, if you leave it, um, I've had a tin chloride, uh, sorry, a tin hedgehog uh, for about seven months. It will last a long time, which unfortunately the tin dendrite won't. And um, the tin dendrite itself is very, very fragile. It's very viable, okay? Okay, is that okay? Has anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? Anybody got any questions? It's all gone very quiet out there. Very quiet, in fact. So, okay. Um, just to sort of, sort of finish off a little bit, um, can we use the tin when it's done? Can we use the tin when it's done? <laughs> um, the tin can, you can. So don't forget that one of the reasons that it's called uh, the hedgehog is spiky. Yeah, very spiky. Um, our tin dendrite is just a big line. Sometimes, K, yeah, it might just find the, 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 um, the tin atoms. So when the tin ions grab their electrons and bolt themselves atom by atom by atom by atom or lots of little atoms, they might just find that the easiest path um, to form is a sort of line. And sometimes you get that sort of dendritic pattern and sometimes it'll form all over the place. And if you really want to have a little play around, what you could actually do is put a paper clip in the middle of the Petri dish and see what happens uh, then. 
Um, how did the electric force create the tin, Kitty? Um, how did it, oh, create the tin. Um, so just to go back about that, when you look at your battery pack, if you look at your battery pack, um, it, uh, this basically, when you connected up the circuit, it allowed electrons to flow around, okay? The tin does not exist, okay? So elemental tin here in the solution is not atoms of tin, it's ions of tin, charged atoms. So an ion is a charged atom. It needed two electrons to become tin metal, so you could see it. So when it hit the black end, it grabbed the electrons from the black terminal, grabbed two electrons and goes from an ion to an atom. And then that happens obviously billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of times, and then you can actually see loads of little tiny crystals of tin forming. Is that okay? And of course, back onto the point with tin, of course, is that tin cans, the in, this is actually mostly iron, but the inside, the inside of the tin, you're very welcome, Matilda. Can you touch the tin on the paper, on, tin on the clip? Yes, of course you can, yeah. Um, and see what happens. Um, but the inside of a tin can is coated in tin, it's coated in tin because it's very, very unreactive, very unreactive. Now, of course, you never do this, but see, <laughs> I could lick that. It's not going to hurt me at all. No, you never do that, of course, at home. Um, but tin is very, very unreactive, and that's why it's suitable to store in here. It won't react with any of the ingredients that are actually inside the can. So that's why a tin can is a fantastic way of preserving food for long periods of time. Okay, cool. So... Just to finish off with, just to finish off with, I'll leave you time with more questions and maybe even at another joke, maybe, and um, slideshow. If we just go back to our slide, I told you about the cat whiskers, and you might remember the cat whiskers, you're thinking, what has a cat whiskers got to do with tin? Well, interestingly, tin is used in nearly, nearly all forms of electronics. So without tin, you can't have any form of electronics. And sometimes it decides that its tin goes, it wakes up and it goes, oh, I'm going to do something different today. I'm going to form a tin whisker. And so actually in electronics, you often get this phenomena called tin whiskers forming. And if you look at them under a microscope, they look like this. Is that not or is that not cute? So this is a tin whisker forming, coming out on its own, out into electronics. And of course, tin's a metal, it'll conduct. So that actually can short things, it can actually short things and cause electronic instruments to stuff to break down, okay? Now another little interesting little side for you on this tin note, this is such a wonderful element. They're all wonderful, they've all got their little stories, a little quirks, but tin's got quite a lot of them. When you look at your mobile phone, for example, you know this glassy screen? So the glassy screen on your, first, on your mobile phone, which of course is, is conductive, that's why you can touch it and move things around is actually made of a compound called indium, so this is element 49, so indium 49 tin oxide. So indium tin oxide. So interestingly, the formula for that would be INSNO. So actually, in effect, when you put your mobile to your ear, you're actually putting your mobile in snow. <laughs> so it's getting colder, not warming up, you know what I mean? You're actually putting your ear in snow. <sighs> Here Little chemistry jokes, little chemistry jokes for you. Is that okay? How are we doing? How's everybody doing? It's all quiet out there. Everybody okay? Good, Alex is good. Kay is great, excellent, lovely. I hope that's been useful for you. Good, lovely, great, lovely, 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 Ava. Isabel, you are very, very well, very, very welcome. Absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure and a delight. So. When, keep your tin hedgehog, so put that onto a shelf and just stare at it and it'll get bigger and bigger um, and the, the solution will get clearer and it'd be lovely to, to sort of see uh, in about a couple of days time. Ava, you are very welcome. I just wish I could see all you guys. It'd be so nice to be a bit more interactive, but we live in these sort of COVID times, which is a bit dodgy. Um, if you wanted to mention the personal story. Yes, I can. Ow. Thank you, Gavin, you're very welcome. Uh, you're very welcome indeed. Now, as you've joined, and it's your first time, every time you join and you do a bit of the science for, with, with Mel Science, with me or with Mark, Sparky Mark, um, we gave you, a send out a personalized card to say that you have done a Mel Science experiment with the actual experiment on it. So if you would like a personalized experimental card from me, all you've got to do is click on the link um, here in the chat. So click on the link in the chat and I will then send you out a personalized, I've done the tin session, I have mastered tin. Uh, and we'll send that out to you in the uh, post. So, I hope that was really cool. I hope you enjoyed a lot of science. I hope it all made sense. 
Um, lovely to have you guys all on board. Lovely to have you guys on board. Um, and don't forget, here every Saturday, so next Saturday at the same time, um, we will be doing, what's the next one? Not quite sure what the next one is. And of course, then on Sunday, you've got Sparky Mark doing physics experiments as well. The link said, I need permission. Yeah, if you just click on the link, it should give you permission and everything should be okay. And your actual body hair stay down. <laughs> What was the, I think I missed the, the point about this little relaxed hair. Yeah, I don't have any hair. It's all gone. It's all gone. Okay, cool. Right. In which case, um, it, it remains for me to say thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for joining, uh, Mel. I really hope to see you uh, next week on Saturday and we share some fantastic more uh, other chemistry. So stay healthy. Stay safe. You are very welcome. It's absolutely very... <laughs> Just a sec. Um, I, Kaya, it's absolutely fabulous, and I'm delighted. They're all good. They get better and better and better and better and better. And we start with a really cool one, and then they just get better. Cool. And on that note, guys and girls, lovely to have you on board, and I look forward very much to seeing you uh, next time. So goodbye.